The makers of Grape Nut bring you George Burns and Gracie Allen with Tony Martin, Ray Noble and his orchestra, and yours truly, John Connor. All right, Ray. One, two... Ladies and gentlemen, this is the age of miracles, of streamlined trains, of overnight coast-to-coast trips by airplane, of George Burns and Gracie Allen, and of children who really do know what's good for them. And here's a letter to prove that. It's from Mr. Gentry Steincross of Harwood, Missouri. He says, I have a daughter six years of age named Janine. My wife and I were trying to explain to her that she should eat more breakfast now as she is playing a lot at school. We use grape nuts, but on that morning did not happen. Well, after we talked for some time, Janine said... Well, Mother, if you would serve grape nuts, I would eat more. Well, we say three cheers for Janine. She knows what's good for her, and she likes it. And your youngsters will, too. For grape nuts are truly delicious. And they're simply packed with the vital food energy everybody needs. Children and grown-ups both. To carry them through till noontime feeling fit. Two tablespoons of grape nuts with whole milk or cream and fruit contain more varied nourishment than many a hearty meal. Great nuts make even a light breakfast a safe breakfast. So tomorrow at your grocer's, get a yellow and blue package of grape nuts. Landlords run want ads for empty apartments. Poets write sonnets about empty hearts. Hillbillies croon ballads about empty saddles. But George and Gracie wander about with empty hats. And here they are, those two great nuts. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, Gracie, say hello. George, I always say... Uh, never mind what you always say. Just say hello. But, George, I always uh, later, say... Later, Gracie. Right now, I want you to say hello. Well, George, I always... Uh, all right, I give up. What do you always say? Hello. <laughs> so you always say hello. Yeah, but why do I always say that? Because it's a custom. Everybody always says that. But why? Why? Because it is. Well, how do you know? Because I've got a good memory and an elephant never forgets. Uh, where did that expression, an elephant never forgets, originate? I don't know. I can't remember. Oh, then you're not an elephant. <laughs> no, I'm not an elephant. But you're pretty. Well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> hello, George. Hello, Gracie. Oh, hello, John. Oh, uh, Johnny, where did that say? Uh, Gracie, an, elephant, never an elephant never forgets is just an expression like shaking hands is a custom. You know what a custom is. Oh, sure. A custom is what you wear when you go to a masquerade, like a sailor custom. Yes, yeah, a nice suit. custom. Yes, I see what you mean. Yeah, that's what it is, and I'm glad that it's over. Yeah, but why is shaking hands a custom? Well, it's, it's, it's because, oh, I must be nuts. Well, I know, but you can't use that as an excuse for everything. <laughs> oh, quiet, quiet. George, I think I can expl- explain shaking hand. Well, let's explain it. <laughs> <laughs> you see, Gracie, <laughs> way back in the early days, the open hand was held out as a sort of a gesture of peace to show that there was no weapon in it. Oh, they hold the weapon behind them in the other hand, huh? <laughs> no, no, there wasn't any weapon. There wasn't any weapon? No. Then what are we talking about? We're talking about shaking hands. All right, then let's shake hands. All right, hello, Gracie. Hi, John. Hi, nice to see you. Gracie, shaking hands is like any other customary greeting, like kissing or... Oh, Johnny, if you think shaking hands is like kissing, then you've never been kissed. <laughs> Either that or he's never shaken hands. No. I say, George. Oh, yes, sir, Ray. Well, uh, Happy New Year. <laughs> happy New Year. Ray, you're only about three weeks late. Oh, I know, Chad, but I can't very well say hello. Because I'm not an elephant, so we'll just have to shake hands with an empty weapon, that's all. <laughs> well, I've had enough of this. I don't want to hear another word about customs or shaking hands or elephants, and especially hellos. I'm losing my mind. Well, hello, everybody. Hello, George. Hello, hello, hello. Well, say hello, oh, George. Oh, shut up. <laughs> Close your big mouth. <laughs> nice of you to drop in this evening, Tony. Do you feel all right? I feel like a million dollars, George. Oh, George, where did that expression? I oh, feel quiet, like a million dollars. Quiet, quiet with those expressions. 
Tony, uh, what makes you feel so gay this evening? What did you do, inherit money, or did you get a traffic ticket? Well, I just joined a new health club, George. I just came from there, and I feel like a two-year-old cold. Tony, a cold wouldn't last two years. Must be asthma. (laughs) Tracy, he said cold, not cold. Yeah, don't you talk funny when you get a cold? Mm. I talk very, very funny. I wish you'd stop because you're driving me out of a vibe. <laughs> and George, George, you know, at this, at this health club, we've got a marvelous handball court. Would you believe it? It holds five bridge tables? You don't say. <laughs> yes, you, you really ought to join the club, George. I know I feel like a new man. Feel like a new man, George. I know how that started. You do, huh? Oh, yes. My sister's been going around with the same fellow for three years. So she, she feels like a new man. Yeah, that's the way it starts. I see, yes, yes. <laughs> Tony, if I last until tomorrow, I might join your health club. Well, George, the exercise will do you a world of good. You get there in the morning, and all we wear is gym shoes and a pair of trunks. I say, Tony, wouldn't it be rather awkward getting into a trunk to exercise? <laughs> Ray, you know, you know, Ray, you've got as much sense as a jackrabbit. How do you know? A little birdie told me. Oh, George, where did that Daniel... Ask Johnny Compton. All right, I've had Johnny. enough of that stuff. Johnny, where did the expression a little birdie told me originate? Well, a little birdie told me is a reply often received from a person who has been asked the source of certain information and who does not care to reveal it. Yes, yes, Johnny, and she do mean you. (laughs) And I might add that years ago, somebody wrote, quote, Curse not the king, not even in thought, for a bird of the air shall carry the voice, and that which has wings will tell the matter, end quote. Boy, what a plug for grape nuts. <clears throat> Tony, Tony, the health club, remember? Oh, yes, yes. You know, George, our Turkish baths are really wonderful. And so are our steam cabinets. George, oh, boy, I wouldn't use those steam cabinets if I were you. You wouldn't have? Oh, definitely not. I took a steam bath once, and when I came out, my clothes were shockingly wrinkled. <laughs> uh-huh. Ray, uh, do you happen to know anything about customs and sayings? Oh, rather. Then, Ray, why do you say goodbye? Oh, well, because I'm leaving. Well, good. Then leave and let leave. Oh, George. George, how did that say Look, that? Gracie, do I look like an encyclopedia? No, you part your hair in the middle. Oh, quiet, quiet. Say, George, you, you really ought to join this club. There isn't a big name in Hollywood who isn't a member. Oh, then I think I'll join, too. I'm dying to meet Claudette Colbert. So am I, Tony. So... <laughs> When did you leave heaven? Only heaven will do when I'm describing you. My heaven on earth started when you came into view. I never knew the thrill of living until you happened along. My heaven on earth came with a glance bringing romance. That lucky chance was all I needed to fill my heart with a song. Loving you isn't hard to explain. You're sweet, you're lovely and gay. Heaven's loss has been my greatest gain For letting an angel like you get away My heaven on earth You're in my arms, you're in my heart Never apart, you're all I treasure So who can measure your worth? You're my heaven Tony Martin, 20th Century Fox star singing My Heaven on Earth. That was beautiful, Tony. No wonder your records are selling like hotcakes. Thank you, George. Oh, that's not much of a compliment. You can buy those for 10 cents a sack. <clears throat> Tracy, why don't you go home and play a hotcake on your phonograph? I did once, and it wouldn't work. It wouldn't, huh? No, the needle got stuck in the maple syrup. 
<laughs> well, that accounts for it. Oh, yes. No, uh, uh, one, yeah. two, Ray. <laughs> oh, no, one you had difficulty, Grace. Yes, Ray. Hard to eat hot cakes with a needle. He got it in. Well, shut the <laughs> up. Well, thanks for waking up, old fellow. Well, I tell you, George, I'm awfully sorry, but Hooray, I they, they went, went the other back. way. Oh, oh. <laughs> well, okay, Ray, it's, uh, we're both two down. Uh, this conversation is driving me nuts. It's not going anywhere. Oh, oh, don't be silly, George. Where could a conversation go at this time of night? Oh, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. Why, somebody doesn't back up a wagon is certainly a mystery. You call that a mystery? I'm writing a mystery. I know, I know. The nightclub mystery of yours called Death Begins at $8.40. Oh, I, ha- I had to change that title. It was stolen from me. Stolen from me? Oh, yes. Yeah. stole it? My daddy. Well, you can't leave a title laying around our house with $8.40 in it. Oh, yes. <laughs> Gracie, please, quiet. Oh, George, where... George. Well, well, where, where did the same quiet come from? Yeah. The telephone was ringing. Well, mm. uh, Gracie, will you answer the telephone? Oh, sure. Uh, hello? Hello? What number do you want? Gladstone 1131? Oh, no, you must have the wrong number. This is Gladstone 1131. That's better. Yeah. What? You want Gladstone 1131? Well, you can't have it. We've got it. Gracie, ask them who they want. Oh. Oh, who do you want, please? What? You want me? Oh. George, George, don't look now, but I think it's Clark Gable. I'm not looking. What? Oh, you're not Clark Gable? Then who are you? Oh, hello, Mother. (laughs) George, it's my mother. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Say goodbye to her for me. Oh, please, George. Uh, What, Mother? What? She did? Just a little while ago? Oh, no. How much did it weigh? Well, isn't that wonderful? Oh, I could hardly wait to see it. Yes, Mother, I'll go right over after the broadcast. Oh, sure, I'll take George with me. He'll want to see it, too. Goodbye. Oh, George, what do you think happened to my sister? Well, Gracie, after listening to your conversation, of course, I couldn't get Oh, well, then I'll tell you. She won a 12-pound turkey in a raffle. <laughs> That certainly is good news. I hope your sister and the turkey are doing as well as can be expected. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. I say, George, did I hear Gracie say that somebody won her sister in a raffle? (laughs) No, Ray, it was a turkey. (laughs) Oh, well, of course, it was a turkey that said it, and I doubt whether I'd believe it. Ray, that way. Oh, yes, right over. Right over, yes. I don't know. Everything happens to me. Find me, Mr. Shane. Find me, Mr. Shane. Hello, boys. Find me, Mr. Shane. Well, who, who is that? Find me, Mr. Shane. Uh, George, he's the window washer. Uh, he, he's in here to clean the windows. Clean windows? Well, yeah. what about me? Oh, no, George. He only cleans windows. Find me, Mr. Shane. Hey, hey, find me, Mr. Shane. Will you come here? Yeah? What are you going to do, sing and wash windows, huh? If you don't mind, we're trying to do a broadcast. I don't mind. Go right ahead. You ain't bothering me none. Why, beer. We ain't, huh? <laughs> Will you stop that singing and get out of here? Hey, who are you to give orders, you big palooka? But me, Mr. Quiet, Shane. quiet. <laughs> palooka, who am I? I'm George Burns of Burns and Allen. He said it, and I'm Gracie Allen of Allen and Burns. Allen and Burns? Yeah. And this is John Carney of Great Nuts and the Trocadero. Gracie, please, I want to get... this is Ray Noble of N is Nibble, O is in Dibble, V is Quibble. How do you know, Mr. Quibble? My name's Nibble. Oh, Bibble, I've had enough of this. And, and this is Tony Martin of 20th Century Fox and Alice Faye. Well, now that we're all acquainted, we can all get together and have lots of fun. All right. Take it, Mr. Window Washer. By mere Bister Shane. Wait a minute. Like wait a minute with that by mere Bister Shane. This is silly. Say, girlie, you don't have to introduce me to Tony Martin. Tony and me are pals. Hell? Well, Charlie, uh, let's step outside and talk things over. No, I got some windows to wash, but I'm getting a lot of interference from this here dribble push. Yeah, dribble push? <laughs> George, how did that start? I don't know. This fella came in here to wash windows, and I don't even know him. No, I don't mean that. I mean, when did you start being a dribble push? A dribble push. <laughs> Look, will you all stop, and Tony, will you get this pal of yours out of here? Uh, Charlie, you'd better go. This is GB. He's the boss here. Mm. Oh, the boss. So that's a palooka you told me was such a big tightwad, huh? <laughs> Tightwad, am I? Yeah, tightwad. Don't say that from that window washer. Yeah. Don't let him get away with it. Go on, say something to him, dribble push. Dribble push? <laughs> boy, yeah, boy, that's telling him dribbling. Look, Tony, dribbling. <laughs> dribbling, I am forever blowing him. Tony, will you get rid of this guy or I will? You and who else? Why, Tony, if we had this little Lord Plump right down at the health club, we'd punch the stuffing out of him. Yeah, what, would you? Well, I'd get stuck in... 
the hell, sir? Oh, the hell, oh, come club. on, Charlie, will you please? Let's go outside. George, I'll explain everything Wait later. a minute, wait a minute. What do you know about the hell club? Oh, not much. I'm only the president, that's all. Is that true? Oh, sure it's so. Don't you remember Tony saying that everybody who is anybody in Hollywood is a member? Oh, yes, I remember that. You yeah. bet. There's Captain Ellen Bogan, the hot shop fella, hmm. Miguel Cuddy, does extra work. Well. Spitzelheimer, the devil's <laughs> testing clerk. I remember. Felix Warfelfinger, the bus boy, the brown well, turkey. Well, 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 quite a click. Quite a click. <laughs> yes, Captain Allen Bogan and McGillicuddy and Spitzelheimer and Felix Warfelfinger. Well, Tony's right. Those are the biggest names in Hollywood. You said it, Ray. The new day. <laughs> Well, I don't know how young musicians do it, but maybe it's because they're working for a genius. Oh, I must look into that, George. They're not supposed to work for anybody but me. <laughs> they're not, huh? Say, Ray, did you tell George about my mystery play that I'm writing? Why, no, Gracie, I didn't tell George about any mystery. Oh, good, then I'll tell him. Yes, good. I don't want to hear. I don't want to hear about your mystery. Oh well, then that's different. It's called the case of the empty watch. The case of the <laughs> empty watch. Yes, huh? or give him the word. <laughs> Gracie, I said I didn't want to hear about your play. All right, then we'll talk about something else. Now, what do you want to talk about? Well, I don't know. Let's talk about your sister. Uh, what's your sister doing now? She's helping me write my mystery. Oh, quiet, quiet. Yeah, quiet, quiet. The curtain's going up. Mm. Now, as the scene opens... I know, that's where the police come in. Uh, well, no, that's where my musical number comes in. Uh, and it's A called... musical number in the mystery? Well, yeah, that's just to break the monotony. I see. Well, that's a nice piece of breaking. Yes. Yeah. My musical number's called The Fantasy of the City. The fantasy of the city. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you see, I tell the story by using the names of cities and towns. And it's the fantasy of the of city. The city yes. yes. Now, for instance, Tony Martin is a rich man who's been making a lot of money in Georgia. That's but right. he needs a few more dollars to pay his taxes. Get it? <laughs> yes, a few more dollars to pay his taxes. Yes. Well, that's not hard for me to understand. Yeah, all I'm catching <laughs> on. Uh, now, uh, Gracie, Gracie, if this is a musical number, do I play the part of a singer? Oh, well, uh, no, Tony. You've got a little Quincy in Detroit. So you can't sing things. You can't sing things? No. Well, uh, walla walla, that's very good. <laughs> <laughs> very good, as Al Jolson would say, New Haven heard nothing yet. I guess not. Am I in this musical number, Gracie, the fantasy of the city? Well, I should say you are. 
Johnny, you're the little boy, Dee, that I'm in love with. But maybe Johnny doesn't love you. Oh, that's all right, George. I'm glad to humor her. Oh, yes. Yes, I get it. You my ass. I see the joke. Yes. Yeah, well, you see, George, Johnny's on my side. <laughs> you spoke to Tucson. Tucson? Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. But, Gracie, I'm a very outspoken man. Well, mm. anywho, the scene it switches now to a town in Montana. Nice piece of switching, yes. But I can't mention the name of it. Why not? Well, George, you're not allowed to say Helen around the radio. Well, that was really a beaut. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's very funny, Anaconda. I made it up myself. Oh, yes, yes. Anaconda, Anaconda, you made it up right out of your own marble head. No, oh, please, John. Uh, I see, Gracie, am I in this uh, fantasy of the city? Oh, well, of the city. <laughs> of the city. Of the city. Certainly. Well, do I play another murder victim? Well, yes, Ray. And your name is Valley. Rudy Valley? No, Death Valley. Uh, Death Valley. Uh, yeah, and you're from Texas. Uh, uh, maybe Ray can play a dead body from Texas. Of course he can. Uh. Of course he can, uh, yes. Well, Ray, you can try. Mm. <laughs> well, I'll be glad to. It sounds like a very jolly at part. Oh, rather. <laughs> Gracie, how is Ray murdered? Well, Ray has a lot of money on him. You see, uh, it was payday in Des Moines. Payday in Des Moines. Yes. And Ray is a moiner. Yes. He's under 16. Yes. And he was driving along the highway. In the Cadillac. No, in the Buke. In the Buke. <laughs> yes. Well, I can just say that it makes much difference which it's a car it is. <laughs> oh, please. Well, anywho, Ray's car runs out of gas in front of Tony's house. Yes. So he gets out of his car to peek into Tony's window. Oh, yes. Well, I hope he doesn't fall, because you know that old saying, Topeka, they are, the harder they fall. Oh, yes, yes. I say, George, you're mistaken about that. About what? Well, about fall. It isn't fall's winter. Although, of course, I understand it's three hours earlier in the east. Uh, in London, Gracie, Ray looking... is looking into Tony's window. Oh, yes, yes. All of a sudden, Tony gets scared when he hears uh, Illinois. He hears an Illinois. Well, and sure. that scares him, yeah. mm-hmm. So he calls his housekeeper, Mississippi. Uh, Gracie, and... you're sure my housekeeper is Mississippi? Yes, you hired her when Virginia quit. Oh, yeah, Mississippi, yeah. yeah. What happened to Maryland and Missouri? Idaho. <laughs> Idaho? You don't? Uh, no. George, maybe you'd better keep your mouth shut. <laughs> well, Tony, comedy relief, eh? Oh, boy, boy. Now, so this is where Johnny Condy comes in. You see, Johnny has fallen for a Notre Dame from South Bend. A Notre Dame. So... And that, of course, makes you jealous. Oh, Winchester Minute, Johnny. Oh, yes, yes, Winchester Minute, yes. Although Johnny has been giving her expensive bottles of Florida water, he has started to tamper with my affections. Rolly? Oh, yes, yes, yes. yes. Then all of a sudden, there's a shot. Ray puts his hand up to his chest and says, Omaha. (laughs) Omaha, and he falls dead on the floor. Yes. And now, the cops are racing to the murder. Well, there's no time to Tuscaloosa. Oh, I should oh, say no. not. But the excitement is too much for me, so like a big Cicero, I start the ball. You don't. Oh, I do. do. And when I found out that Johnny was leaving me, I bowled him more than ever. Shame on you, Johnny. Well, why am I leaving you, Gracie? Well, because you're afraid you will be Connecticut with the murder. Mm. I see, and I suppose the Worcester is yet to coma. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> and after Ray is shot, the police are ready to arrest Tony. But he is saved by Santa. Santa? Well, that's just his moniker. Oh, Santa Monica. Yes. I guess it, yes. <laughs> Came to me like that. Uh-huh. Well, George, that's the end. Do you like this play as well as the other? Well, Gracie, I hate to say but I think all of your plays are wonderful. Oh, do you think I'll be able to sail them? Sail them? Well, I hope you can sail them down the river. <laughs> <laughs> say, uh, George, now that the play is over, what do you say if we Oklahoma? Oklahoma, that's a good idea, Tony. <laughs> what was that? Ray Noble just broke the window that he was topeka in. <laughs> he broke the window, huh? Yes, with a little rock. With a... <laughs> for you. The play is over. Oh, good. Johnny, I was going to the Trocadero after the broadcast tonight. You know, Amarillo girl who's hungry. I see. I like some dinner. You like dinner. Mm-hmm. You can't go to the Trocadero without eating it. Well, you know me, George. I never could Pasadena. Pasadena. You can't Ray, the music. <laughs> Gracie will now sing I Double Dare You. Sing it, Gracie. I double dare you to sit over here. I double dare you to lend me your ear. Take off your high hat and let's get 
firmly. Don't be a scare cat. Say, what do you care? Can't you take a dare? I double dare you to hit me and then. I double dare you to hit me again. And if that look in your eye means what I'm thinking of, I double dare you to fall in love with me. I double dare you. Question. If I should say the night was grand, would you demand a proof? Or would you be indifferent and aloof? You seem to think that half aloof is better than none. Keep on back in the play again. So maybe that's the reason we're not having any fun. I double dare you to sit over here. Because it's more intimate over here. Take off your high hat and let's get friendly. You act so distant, you practically are non-existent. I double dare you to kiss me and then. I double dare you to kiss me again. And if you're able to love the way Clark Gable does, I double dare you to give my daddy a buzz. Num so nine five three four. That's my daddy. I double dare you. Thank you, folks. Thank you. And now we turn you over to the Discovery Department of our program. You all know Johnny Conti. Well, he says he's just made a surprising discovery. Yes, sir, George. I've just found out about the fastest moving creature in the world. Now, don't tell me. Let me guess. Uh, is it Gracie? No, George. It looks like a honeybee. It's only half an inch long, but it attains a speed of 800 miles an hour. Indeed. Very interesting. Is that the surprise? Oh, no. The surprise is yet to come. For I've discovered something that travels even faster. And that's the good news about Grape Nuts, the most delicious cereal you ever put a spoon to. Everybody's serving Grape Nuts these days. For everybody loves their satisfying, mellow goodness, their full-flavored sweet taste. That rich flavor comes from the special blending of sun-ripened wheat and malted barley, which brings out all the mouth-watering goodness. And Grape Nuts have another distinction all their own, a delightful, crisp crunchiness that makes them extra appetizing. So tomorrow morning, give yourself this treat. Sit down to a bowl full of those golden brown kernels. Top them with milk or cream. Add some sliced bananas or stewed or canned peaches, and then go to it. Every heaped-up spoonful will be real delicious fun. And you'll agree with thousands of other people that Grape Nuts are the best-tasting cereal you ever enjoy. Well, Gracie, say good night. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Remember me, Gracie, I'm the window washer. What are you doing after the broadcast? Oh, I can't see you tonight. I'm going home with Gribblefoot. That's me, folks. Good night, all. <laughs> If you want to help fight infantile paralysis, send one dime to President Roosevelt, the White House, Washington, D.C. We can lick infantile paralysis with the March of Dimes. Good night. This is the National Broadcasting Company. <laughs>